To verify your MST configuration, use the show spanning tree MST configuration command. When this output, you can verify the region name that has been configured, the revision number that is being utilized, and the number of instances that have been configured. In this case, we have instance zero, which is the IST instance, which has all of the VLANs associated with it by default, and this is the internal spanning tree instance. We have instance one that was manually created and it has VLANs 11, 21, and 31 mapped to it, and there's instance two, which has VLANs 12, 22, and 32 mapped to it. We examine DSW1 by using the same command, show spanning tree MST configuration. We'll see here that the region name is switch, the revision number that is set is three, and the instance is configured as three. We have the IST instance is zero, which has every single VLAN mapped to it by default. And then we created two other instances, MST instance one, which has VLANs 10 and 100 associated with it, and MST instance two, which has VLANs 20 and 200 associated with it. So this configuration, uh, or this verification command, show spanning tree MST configuration is excellent for spotting the differences. If you're having problems, compare, for example, DSW1's configuration with ASW1's configuration. So we type in show spanning tree MST configuration. This information on ASW1 should be the exact same as DSW1. So let's flip back and forth. DSW1, ASW1, DSW1, ASW1 it's the exact same. If the configuration is not the exact same, then these two switches would not be considered within the same MST region. And as a result, they would not be able to build the appropriate spanning tree topology. So what has to match? Always remember, the name has to match, the revision has to match, as well as the instance to VLAN mappings for the switches to be in the same region. When verifying the spanning tree topology with multiple spanning tree protocol, you will do so on an instance by instance basis. This is unlike our verification with per VLAN spanning tree plus or rapid per VLAN spanning tree plus because with those protocols, we were reviewing it on a VLAN by VLAN basis, the spanning tree topology. However, with multiple spanning tree protocols, since VLANs are associated with the instance or multiple VLANs are associated with an instance, we will review the topology based on the instance itself. And we can do so by typing in show spanning tree MST and then providing the instance number. So let's take a look at this in our live environment. On DSW1, we'll type in show spanning tree MST1. And we can see in this output that our local or for MST1 we have VLANs mapped 10 and 100. The current bridge, so DSW1 has a MAC address listed as such, and its priority is one, which is a combination of the bridge priority number with the extended system ID. And what is the extended system ID? It is the instance number. So that's why it has a priority of one. Zero plus one. And we can see that it is the root bridge for MST1. All of its ports are in the designated role in the forwarding state. Let's go and examine ASW1 with the same command. Show spanning tree MST1. When you look at this output, same VLANs are mapped for MST1. Thank goodness, because it is our responsibility to configure those mappings. But we can see here our local bridge has a priority of 32,769, which is the default value of 32,768 plus the instance number. So that's why it gets 32,769, because this is instance one. The root bridge information states that the root bridge has this particular MAC address. Now the MAC address is worse than the local bridge of ASW1. However, remember the priority is checked first during the root bridge election process and the priority for our root bridge is one. 
which we've already described as being zero, which was it was manually set to the priority, plus the instance number of one. It even says here that to get to our root bridge, we're using our local interface, gigabit zero slash one to get there. It has the cost of 20,000 to get there. And if we look down below, you can see it is the root port in the forwarding state. And all of the other ports in this particular topology, fast Ethernet zero slash one and two are designated ports going down to PC one and PC two and gig zero two in this case happens to be a designated port in the forwarding state as well.